Hey everybody, welcome. Um, got a got a little study here. Our last study before the end of the Mayan calendar, before it resets tomorrow. Lord Winling, I plan on being here. There's too many things in our faith, too many uh, events that need to happen before the destruction of of this dispensation of time and space. But tomorrow could very well mark a significant shift in awareness for the whole world to start preparing for its end and the great and strong delusion that will confuse many. So uh, <coughs> I prepared a study here today. I'm a little uh, hamstrung. I don't have eSword on this laptop here, but I, I was uh, able to tape, uh, paste my study to an email and uh, we'll just go from there. Okay, and uh, so let the Spirit guide us, okay? just want to pray, dear Heavenly Father, just grant us the wisdom and the courage and the discernment to study your word, Father, and let your word ring truth and speak truth to our hearts as we are guided by your wisdom and your Holy Spirit in our walk with you in these last days. And we pray in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach and the Ruach HaKadosh. Amen. And, uh, you know, one of the things that needs to happen, and it's a, it's a semi-controversial situation because, you know, you'll know it when you see it, but what is it? You know, the two witnesses, very, very controversial subject. Is it the church? Are they two individuals, you know? And uh, I want to make the case that it could be both, okay? And, and I'm saying this because none of us are, are Greek scholars, so we don't have uh, a real access to it. But if you can read English, you can see that this discussion is, is plausible. And uh, I'm going to present the case today. So this is going to be a study about who the two witnesses are and what that time should be about. And I just want to set it up that, you know, six trumpets have blasted before chapter 11 and then you have the two witnesses right before the seventh trump right before that great earthquake right before the return of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach okay so we need to know there's six trumpets all that stuff has gone down okay all that confusion and devastation is happening and all that fear is happening and a false god is on the earth okay so Let's go to Revelation 11.1. 1. And there was given me like, a rod, like a, unto a rod. And, a, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Okay. John has been transported in time and space his spirit body okay whether his pineal gland was activated and he was taken out into another time and space you know that's for the quantum spiritualists to discover but we know he was there interesting that we know that Zechariah was was also in in spirit shown the Lord's day and Zechariah mentions I think Zechariah saw John Zechariah in 2.1 says, I lifted up my eyes again, and looked, behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. And then I said, Whither goest thou? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem, and to see what is the breadth thereof, and what is the length thereof. And go ahead and read Zechariah 2, and they're talking about the end times. Revelation 11.3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. And now in the English, it's, I will give power to my two, one, two, witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days closed in sackcloth. Now these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Okay? Two olive trees and the two candlesticks. Now I'm with you. Later on we're going to see in Revelation 2, that the, can, the golden candlesticks that were, were in a circle with the Lord standing in the middle of them, may, with Yeshua in the middle, 
probably in, uh, be in front of the throne of the Lord. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. We'd have to do a little more research. <laughs> but this is two. Okay, so you have two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Okay, now listen to this. Zechariah 4, okay, verse 1. And the angel that spoke with me returned and woke me as a man that is wakened up out of his sleep. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have seen and behold a candlestick, all of gold. So Zechariah is in a vision. He's in the spirit, having a vision, and he's woken out of that vision back into his spirit like a man woken out of a dream. Okay, and the angel spoke and said, What seest thou? And Zechariah says, I have seen and behold a candlestick, all of gold, and a bowl upon the top of it, and its seven lamps thereon. There are seven pipes, yea, seven to the lamps, which are upon the top thereof. And the two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. And I answered and spoke to the angel that spoke with me, saying, What are these? To olive trees, my Lord. And the angel that spoke with me answered and said to me, Knowest thou not what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the top stone with shoutings of grace unto it. Okay? Now, is, are these seven pipes? Are these the seven spirits? Okay? Of the churches, of the candlestick? Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands have, shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you, for who hath despised the day of small things? Even they shall see with joy the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel, even these seven, which are the eyes of the Lord that run to and fro through the whole earth. Okay, are these the spirits of the seven churches? Are these the eyes of the Lord? Are these the angels of the Lord? Are these the watchers, the seven angels, archangels? Okay. Then I answered, then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered the second time and I said unto him, He's talking about the olive trees. What are these two olive branches which are beside the two golden spouts that empty the golden oil out of themselves? When you see the oil and you see the trees, look. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. And he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Okay? So here in Zechariah, you have this understanding that these, this, this, this candlestick with seven pipes represents seven spirits or angels, maybe of the seven churches. Further, further examination might reveal that, but we're talking about these oil, these two anointed olive trees is what I'm getting to, because it says, I saw the two olive trees and the two candlesticks, okay, together, and, and follow me on this. So, who are these, who are these candlesticks and who are these olive trees, okay? And now I'm going to make the case for the olive trees. Okay, there's a theory that says the two that come in the end will be Elijah and Enoch, and I'll explain a little in a little bit why I believe that. Okay, and 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 here is here is an example of of the evidence for Elijah, and that's it's it's through a few different books. So bear with me on this. Malachi four five. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come to smite the earth with a curse. Okay, so from the time he left to before the great day of the Lord, John the Baptist coming as John the Baptist, I don't think satisfies the coming of Elijah as Elijah. Okay, and I'm going to show you why. 
2 Kings 2.1 And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, stay here, I, I ask you, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And now he's telling him, Stay here, I'm not going to leave you. Okay? And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said to him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Hey, I ask you, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. The spirit of Elijah. Okay? He's asking that a double portion be upon him. And he said that. Okay? And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, Elijah says. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. If you don't see me, a double portion of my spirit will not remain in you, with you. Okay? And it came to pass, and they still went on and talked, and behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven, and Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. So he ripped his clothes off. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the robe of Elijah that fell from Elijah and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Okay? And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Lest peradventure the spirit of the Lord hath taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or in some valley. And he said, Don't send them. Because he knew he had gone. And when they argued with him until he was ashamed, like you don't believe me, you don't have faith, he says, then send them. And they sent therefore fifty men, and they sought three days, but found him not. And when they came again to him, for he waited at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? Look, here you have a case where a man is now filled with the spirit of Elijah. A double portion. Elisha had a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. Okay? So was Elisha Elijah? No. Elisha was Elisha with the spirit of Elijah. Able to use his mantle to part the waters because the spirit of Elijah was in him with him. And Elijah promised him, I will not leave you. If you see me go up, my double portion of my spirit will remain in you. Okay? So let's talk about John. Luke 1.13 But the angel told him, Stop being afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to name him John. 
This is a son, an individual spirit, an entity who will be named John. He will have great joy, and many people will rejoice at his birth, because he will be great in the Lord's presence. He will never drink wine or any strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. Okay? He will bring many of Israel's descendants back to the Lord their God. He is the one who will go before the Lord with the spirit and power of Elijah. So this double portion of spirit that was given to Elisha is now going to be given to John. Is John Elijah? No, John is John. Is John given knowledge and power according to the spirit of Elisha, Elijah to discern Yeshua and to have so many people drawn to him? Yes, okay? But John is John. Because it says here, he will go before the Lord with the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous and to prepare the people to be ready for the Lord. Okay? There was a magnetism. There was a power in what he said. He would say, prepare, prepare yourselves. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And people would respond and be like, man, he's right. I'm hearing the voice of a spirit and the spirit is drawing me because Yeshua said, mine will hear my voice. Okay. So Matthew 17, 10, and his disciples asked him saying, why then say the scribes that Elijah, Elias, Elijah in the Greek must come first? And Yeshua answered them and said to them, Elijah has truly come. I, I, Elijah shall truly first come. And restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias has already come. And they knew him not. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So John the Baptist came in the spirit. And the spirit of Elijah was with him. Okay. And he came before Yeshua. So in the end. When Elijah, Elijah returns to at, before the great day, terrible day of the Lord and when he comes to, to restore all things, okay? So, let's look at Malachi 4.1. Truly the coming day is burning like a furnace. The, all the arrogant and all who practice evil will be stubble on the great and terrible day of the Lord. The coming day will set them on fire, says the Lord of the heavenly armies, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But the Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in its light for those who fear my name. You will go out and leap like calves released from their stalls and trample down the wicked. Indeed, they will become ashes under the soles of your feet on the day I do this, says the Lord of the heavenly armies. Who is he talking about? Not two individuals, but many. Okay. Pay attention. Okay, remember the law of Moses, my servant, that I gave him at Oreb for all Israel, both the decrees and laws. Pay attention. I am sending Elijah the prophet to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I'll come, strike the land, and utterly destroy it. Okay. When is that? When will, when will we trample down the wicked and they become ashes under the soles of our feet on the day that we do this? One second. One second, one more second. Yes, you need to ask Yeshua to tell Diablo to leave me alone because this is very disrespectful to what I'm doing. Only the devil would want me to be interrupted in the word of God. Okay? Stop it. Alright, cool. Um, 
they know what I'm doing and they're over there making noise so they needed to be corrected in a nice caring and loving way okay so look <clears throat> what is this time about what is this time about this is about the last days and we're gonna elaborate on this look at a Re revelation 11 3 and I will give power unto my two witnesses that they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days closed in sackcloth these are the two olive trees Okay, the anointed ones that stand before the Lord. Excuse me, one second. Can you please, you, you need to understand that this is disrespectful to what I'm doing, that it must be not Yeshua having, having you feel that you need to interrupt what I'm doing, but this is of Satan, okay? And if you don't understand that the devil has you thinking that it's cute to come and interrupt me while I'm doing this, when I've asked you to give me this time, then you have no respect. So come here and sit by me and listen, okay? Okay. Thank you. And listen, please, because these people need our time and they don't want to be interrupted by this in distraction. This is the word of God and it is holy and special, okay? Okay. Okay, so listen with me, okay? Okay, but did you know you're going to have to do a new video? No, I'm not. I'm showing them that no matter what happens, I'm going to stay with them and that I'm going to... I'm going to correct you lovingly and, and put the truth in front of you. And you can choose to either respect the word of God or disrespect the word of God. Okay? Now let's see what you choose to do. Okay? That's a little goofy. Okay. Please, I'm asking you to either be quiet and sit next to me or to leave the room. You could learn something if you sit right here. Okay? Okay. Sorry about that. I just don't have the editing abilities to, to do this. Okay, this kid. Anyway, he needs attention right now, and I apologize. Um, so, and I will give power unto my two witnesses that they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of earth. Do you know that it, it, as, as nice as you are and as, as respectful as you are, this is devil stuff you're doing? Okay. You are, you are purposely distracting what we're doing here, and we're worshiping and, and praising God using His Word, okay? And what you're doing is very distractful and disrespectful. Do you understand that? Yeah. Then could you please stop? Yeah. Because this is not of God, okay? Only, only evil would want us to be interrupted while we're talking about this, okay? Do you understand that? Okay. Are you going to choose evil or are you going to choose good? Good. Okay, please show me that that's what you mean and give me a few more minutes and then we'll go play, okay? All right? Okay. Okay. Okay, so these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. All right? Now, the two witnesses are the two trees and the two candlesticks. You know, I can see the argument. I can see, well, the churches that you are in, there's going to be, you know, tens of thousands of people doing this. I can see that, but I can't see what's going to happen to these two witnesses happening simultaneously to tens of thousands of people who are going to be killed, put to death, and rise three days later. I, I think they're two separate entities, okay? All right, so look at Revelation 120. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks... The seven stars of the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Okay? These, these, these seven candlesticks were, were specifically referred to as golden candlesticks. These two candlesticks are referred to as just candlesticks. Is it semantics? Is it wordplay? I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to continue with this study. Let the Spirit guide us. Okay? Daniel eleven twenty nine, At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter, for the ships of Kittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. And arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination with that make it desolate, okay, the image of the beast, 
and, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now we can bring in this other idea of, of miraculous powers and, and actions and activities performed by the two churches, okay? In, in accordance, in conjunction with the two witnesses. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame and by captivity and by spoil many days, okay? I don't think the two witnesses are going to be killed in four or five different ways, okay? I think, I think it's more, more like these are the ways that the church, people in the churches, that the masses who are going to do these things and trample, and, and trample them like ashes under their feet, as we were told in, in Zechariah. Okay? This is how they will be killed in many different ways. I think the two witnesses are going to be killed the same death at the same time and not suffer these, uh, these different deaths. Okay? Look at they shall fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. Okay? Now when they shall fall, they shall be helped with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Now when they fall, when they... The Holy Spirit will be with them. They're going to receive help. As that blade comes down, they're not going to feel it. As that fire engulfs them, they're not going to feel it. Uh, like Yeshua said... Um, Father, into my hands, I entrust, into your hands, I entrust my spirit. And he was taken up, and he didn't suffer the actual suffering that's involved in crucifixion, in the torture state, the slow death by asphyxiation. That at that moment, he had satisfied the criteria. He was in a position where death was inevitable, and the Father took him. He just showed us the courage it takes up to that point. Okay, being hit in the face isn't reason, oh, Father, I entrust my, in my spirit. That can't kill you. You have to take that blow. Okay? You have to take that blow. Hello? Okay, that was the school calling. I got two sick kids home today. So, anyway, I'm not doing... You can see why I go in my my cave to do these things there's so many distractions but god bless you for bearing with me and this just shows that you know hey we're all human we all have issues to deal with um okay so where was i so these these are the two olive trees okay so by sword my thing point and now when they shall fall they will help them with a little help many shall cleave to them with flatteries and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. So this is the great tribulation, and we will be made white, and we will wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb, and we will be gold tried by fire. Okay? Revelations 11.4 these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must be in this manner killed. Okay? These ones that we talked about in Daniel, they're going to fall. Boom, boom, boom in different ways. But these two aren't going to fall. Enough to where the other ones, the rest of us who are alive and remain will be willing to go to our deaths or endure to the very end to be caught up with the Lord in the clouds. Because this doesn't happen till the final trumpet. And the sixth trumpet has blown. And we're going to see the seventh trumpet is about to be blown. Okay? And it, uh, so let's go, let's go to... Fire proceedeth out of their mouth to devour their enemies. Look at, look at, look at what Elijah knows how to do. 2 Kings 1.10, And Elijah answered, and he said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven, and hurt and consume thee and thy fifty. Okay? And there came down fire from heaven, and consumed him and his fifty. Alright? So look, fire proceeds out of their mouth. Uh, that means, no, that doesn't mean they shoot you like Godzilla. It means that I command fire to come down, and out of their mouth, that command, fire comes down. And Elijah is the example here. 
Okay, look at Luke 9, verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou wish that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did? But he turned and he rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit you are. Elijah came in the spirit of Elijah. And they didn't come. These disciples weren't here to destroy they came in the spirit of salvation, through repentance, through following the Lord, through, through, through acceptance of Jesus Christ. That was the spirit that was given to them. And they were to perform those miracles to bring people, to save people, not to destroy people. And he was clear about that. You were a different spirit than Elijah. Okay? Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But wait here in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Okay? That's what he's telling them. Your spirit is going to be from the Holy Spirit. Okay? John was filled with the Holy Spirit and the, the spirit of Elijah was with him. Okay? Think about this. Okay? There's a separation. These are entities, spiritual intellects and the Holy Spirit working together to do God's will with more power, like a superhero almost, you know, God's superheroes. Luke 1, 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb, okay? And that's what, talking to, to um, talking about John the Baptist, okay? So now these two witnesses, these have the power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And who did this? Look at James 5.17. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Okay? That's the power of Elijah. Okay? Look at 1 Kings 17.1. And Elijah the Tithbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Okay, and that's the power of Elijah. Okay, he has the power to shut up the heavens. He has the power to call heaven from, call fire from the heavens. Okay, he's given that power from from Yahweh. Okay, he's given that power from Yahweh Elohim. He's given that power, as 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 he speaks, the powers of God are available to him. Okay, and we saw God give that power to to Satan against Job. Okay, but here, this is Elijah's power, okay? And they also have power over waters to turn them to blood, to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will, okay? It's really simple. They will be, they are going to be at the end end here for the saints, for the elect, to see those miracles and to and to just double down on their faith and their courage to do their own miracles and their own fight their own battle wherever they are, knowing that the two witnesses were here to show them the way out, the, the, the two minute warning, you know what I mean? It's, it's time. When you see that, you know it's time and you will step up into another gear, okay? And they will give you that strength, okay? And unless if it were possible, we'll fool the very elect. But it won't be possible because we will have them in the very end, okay? And we will be hoping with a little help from them, okay? So Revelation eleven seven, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them, the two candlesticks and the two olive trees, okay? And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay? And, and now you're going to have the two witnesses, the two, the, the two witnesses who are the olive trees, laying like in state, like sea, or maybe even just hung on, hung on a tree, or just laid out there to rot, because they're going to be so happy. 
Okay, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, Jerusalem, okay? And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Okay, prophets. Never once are we seeing that these, and these two masses of people, our, our Lord isn't trying to make a puzzle that can't be solved. You just have to trust with the Spirit, okay? But these are two individuals, all right? Look at Hebrews 9, 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Every human being, it's appointed that they are to die one death. Even Yeshua came in human form to die one death, okay? But who hasn't died? All the people that are alive right now haven't died, but, but if you go from a hundred years back, who hasn't died? There's only two in the history of our Lord's word, okay? Enoch and Elijah. 2 Kings 2.11, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah was taken in the flesh and transported up into another time and space never to return. Okay. Hebrews uh, Genesis 5.24 And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Enoch walked with Elohim and he was not for Elohim took him. Okay, Hebrews 11.5, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. And what was his testimony? Behold, he comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment. Okay, the book of Enoch is his testimony and Jude quotes it. Okay. Revelation 11, 11. And after three and a half days, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And at that same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe was passed, and behold, the third woe come quickly, and the seventh angel sounded, the seventh trump. Okay? And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was, which art and was, and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Okay, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou should give us reward unto thy servants and prophets and to the saints. Okay, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices, thunderings, and an earthquake, and a great hail. Okay? Look. Why are the two witnesses there? Okay? For two reasons. Up until the end, people will have a chance to be saved by these prophecies and the word of God, and, and God calling to them at that moment. Okay, for them to realize and have it click. And the other reason is because many of us could be alive at that time and are expected to save many people through our exploits, as spoken of in Daniel, and to try our, our, our gold in the fire and to, to wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb. Okay, And look in Revelations, and you can find it. But when, he, when, when uh, I think in the, between the sixth and seventh seal, it says, who are these? This great multitude that can't be counted said these are those who washed the robes in the blood of the Lamb and were killed for the testimony of Jesus Christ, who were beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay? It's going to happen. There's nowhere to hide. Okay? Tomorrow, December 21, 2012, and Lord willing, I'm going to be here. Because the world's going to be here. Because Satan hasn't come. 
and 2,000 days and 2,100, 290 or 340, whatever, hasn't even begun. The Great Tribulation hasn't even started. So, again, the Tortuguera Monument in Tabasco, Mexico says, that on December 21, 2012, the Bolon Yachteku, they will re descend from the heavens to the earth, okay? That's what the world is waiting for. The New Age is waiting for it, okay? The Ten Kings and Daniel, who attempt to mingle with the seed of men, they will be eating and drinking and giving and taking in marriage, just like the days of Noah. That's the they they're talking about, that Yeshua was talking about, okay? That's all I'm waiting for. The supernatural, okay? Because until it gets supernatural, it's just another day in paradise, okay? As we wait for our return of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you give us strength and that we understand that we may have to endure unthinkable atrocities in your name, Father. And give us that strength and that wisdom and the courage to go to our deaths for our precious Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we pray this in the name of Yeshua and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. Peace. Oh, hey, tomorrow I got a surprise. Something's going to go down, Lord willing. Bye.